Hey everybody, I hope y'all are doing great. Uh, since Christmas is right around the corner, it got me thinking about Christmas last year and what I did, where I was able to crank out over 200 of these game boards with all of these holes drilled in here. I was able to do it all very quickly and without using a CNC machine. So I thought maybe I should put together a little video and show you my secret weapon. <laughs> Before we go into my secret weapon, let me give you a little bit of a background first. So this game is called Pegs and Jokers. So you essentially have these pegs and you have to come out of the home spot and go all the way around the boards and into your safe area, uh, which is this L spot right here. And so you have all these boards that are connected all the way around and you play with teammates. It's kind of like the game Sorry. It's a lot of fun. So if you like games and you've never played this game, you should play this game because it's fun for the whole family. Now each player gets their own game board and the boards have a dowel on one end that fits into a hole on the other boards that you can easily interlock them and play with as many players as you like. So there's one board per player and you play in teams of two. Now for Christmas last year, we wanted a nice box to put these boards in. So uh, we found a company called Packlane.com that uh, made it really easy for us to design these custom boxes directly on their website. So you basically go there and you put in the exact dimensions that you want the box to be. You can drag and drop your graphics over the top of the box and place your order. It's that simple. These boxes turned out much nicer than we were expecting. Anyway, these boxes hold four boards each, so it's a four-player box. Uh, we have our instructions in here. These are actually Baltic Birch Walnut Veneered Plywood Boards. There's two decks of cards in there, and then a bag full of pegs. Now, just so you know, Pac-Lane did not sponsor this video. I was just really impressed with the boxes and wanted to pass that info along to you. If you do want to submit an order over at Pack Lane and make your own boxes for your own product, I can put a referral link in the description of the video which will give you $25 off your first order. So the very first step when you're creating all these game boards is to make yourself a good template. I have all my holes and everything drilled into there. Uh, my curves and everything are all nicely sanded. Then what I did is I took a five x five sheet of Baltic birch plywood with a walnut veneer and I ripped a bunch of strips that were approximately this width, much longer than this though. And then I took my template and put it over the boards and traced out over the board. From there, I took the boards over to the bandsaw and then I just rough cut around each board just so that I had the rough shape. And then from there, what I did is I took uh, I actually have these other templates that I made. So this is another one that's all nicely sanded. There's no holes or anything drilled in, but these templates I used with double stick tape over the top of my rough cut. I'm just gonna pretend this is a rough cut here. And I would double stick tape those over the top. And then on my router table, I used a flush trim bit to make exact duplicates and exact copies of each of these. Once I had all of those cut out. Then what I did is uh, notice how each of these has a stair step uh, on both this end and then also on this end. In order to cut those stair steps out of there, what I did is I made uh, this jig over here. Basically, you slide the template in there. These cam clamps uh, lock down and your router rides on this area right here to cut that out. And then you basically flip this over, stick it in there, and then you run out the other one. Uh, this is not my secret weapon. This actually helped a lot, but that's not really what this video is supposed to be about. So I'm kind of going a little bit overboard with uh, what I did, but I feel like you need this background in order to understand the process. And now,
let me break it down for you. So I'm going to remove these spacers. I'm going to remove that. And basically what we have is a three quarter inch Baltic birch uh, tabletop that is mounted to my drill press table. And it's mounted just with a couple C-clamps in the back there. Uh, so on the bottom, we have a fixed fence that is nailed and glued to the table. And on the top here, we have what I call a floating fence. Uh, so there's a knob over here, and there's also a knob on the other side that allows you to loosen those and then adjust this fence uh, either this way or that way. Uh, it doesn't move a lot, it just moves enough so that you could set the tightness or the tolerance between this fence and this fence. So that when your workpiece is in here, you can slide it back and forth and it's tight enough so that it doesn't wiggle, but it's loose enough so that it can still slide. So in the top fence, what we have are bamboo dowels that are drilled and spaced apart according to whatever hole pattern we want. So what these end up doing is these end up being reference pins for our stops. Uh, when we slide the workpiece around in here, we reference off these pins to drill a particular hole pattern uh, with the drill bit. So the drill bit stays fixed in place and the workpiece moves around the table, referenced off of these pins. Now these pins work in combination with the spacers. Uh, so slide the spacers over here and you can see that some of the spacers are color coded and some of the pins are color coded. And what that allows us to do is drill a particular pattern for a particular row based off of the color code. So the way that we reference off of these pins up here are by using this spring stop. And this is just, uh, it looks kind of complicated, but it's, it's just a very simple device. So this pulls out, uh, there's a hole in there, there's a dowel in here with the spring, and, uh, and that's basically it. So the, the spring uh, goes over the dowel, this slides in here. So here, I'll show you how that works real quick. Now, this sits in here kind of tight because uh, it's already set, but uh, I could basically come in here like this and I could now reference off this pin. If I wanted to reference off this pin. Um, now you notice it wiggles this way, so every time you set it on a pin, you want to push your workpiece against here, but it doesn't. It, it acts as a solid stop when it's referenced off that pin. So I'll go ahead and show you how that works really quick. I'll go ahead and move all of those down to reference off of the first pin. Now this board's already been drilled out, so this is just for demonstration purposes. But as you can see, the drill bit is over that first hole. And so what I can do is I, if there was a hole I had to drill there, I could drill that out. And then I can move this over to the next pin, drill that hole, move it over to the next pin, push my workpiece up against the stop, drill the next hole. And I can go all the way down the line, drill all those holes. Here, I'm trying to work around the tripod here go to the last hole, drill that out. So once you get one row drilled out, then what you can do is grab the next row spacer, move your workpiece up, put the spacer down here, and now you're ready to drill the next row. But now that we have our spacer here, uh, we reference the color off of the color pins. So since this is purple and we're doing row two, I'm gonna move my stop to this purple pin and then also uh, eventually dr drill out this other purple pin here. So I'm just gonna move everything down to the purple. And again, you can see that now it's lined up with this uh, next row. Uh, so I can drill that out, move this all the way down here, and now I'm right here and can drill that out. And now that that row is complete, I can take this spacer out, move my workpiece up, put that spacer down here to do the next row. Now I'm referencing off this orange or red or whatever color that is. Uh, so this pin actually has some orange on it, so I could just drill that right now and then push everything down here to drill the next orange hole and continue on just lining up orange with the orange. Now for the last row, I'm gonna pull this spacer, move my workpiece up, slide the last spacer in here and you can see this one's green so obviously I'm gonna go and move my stops to the first green pin which is right here and now you can see the drill bit is lined up with that hole there and now I can proceed through the other green pins to drill out those other holes. 
And I'm not sure if you noticed, but I have all of these grooves cut in here. Those are basically for the sawdust. You can see there's some little pieces of sawdust in there. When you're sliding everything back and forth, this actually pushes all the sawdust into those grooves and eventually they just fall off the side of the table on this side and the other side. So sawdust really never ends up becoming a factor or getting caught in between your spacers or anything because those little gutters just funnel it right off the jig. So another thing that I really like about this jig is that this vent is completely replaceable. So if I ever wanted to create a new hole pattern in something completely different, all I would have to do is remove this fence, create a new one with new dowels, with different spacing, and create new spacers at the bottom for my row height spacing, and I could basically drill out any hole pattern that I'm looking for. Now right now my mind is thinking about these game boards, but I'm sure there's other applications out there where a jig like this would be useful. So if you guys can think of any other applications, I'd be really interested to hear about it. So let me know in the comments. Also, if you'd like to make one of these Pegs and Joker game sets, I do have plans available, so I'll put a link to the project plans in the description of this video. Just note that this jig is not part of those plans. Now, if you're still looking for projects to build for people this Christmas, this project is a hit, especially for people that like to play games. Now, if you're curious how I was able to finish so many of these game boards in such a short period of time, check out my paint booth video where I build these swivel stands that made it super easy to spray 10 boards at a time. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. What do you think of these pegs? These pegs come out of here and go around over there and then come to their safe area.